You have zero chance of achieving financial freedom if you can't do this one thing. If you can't manage your money properly, you won't be financially independent and you won't even be financially stable either. Most of us have this idea that because we have a roof over our head or we drive a nice car, we're eating really good food, we have a nice job with decent pay, we feel that we're doing well financially and that we know how to manage our money properly. I'm here to tell you that is completely false and I'm speaking from my own experience. I took a deep dive into my personal finances recently and I'm a little embarrassed to say that after taking a big look at my own finances, I haven't been managing my money properly. And I've been making a few mistakes over and over and over again and this has been going on for years. And I'll show you exactly what I mean because I know I've been showing y'all my entire wealth journey. I've been showing y'all my net worth, my money's going up, I'm investing, I'm saving. So you're probably wondering what do I mean that I haven't been managing my money properly? What I mean is, even though it seems like I've been doing a lot of things right, I still haven't been taking the proper steps to build wealth to the optimum level that I know I can get my wealth to. And I wanna share it with you in this video because I think it can help you out a lot. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna have it on the screen there for you to see, but I developed something called a smart money calculator. And after built, I built it with myself in mind, like I wish I could have access to this, this, and this when it comes to my finances. I wish I had like a big picture view of everything and didn't have to go through spreadsheets and spreadsheets and so much information just to see how much money that I should budget for per year. I hate doing that. It's very time consuming. I want to create something that was, you know, time effective. I can take one look, bam, I know what I need to do. Now I can close the laptop and keep on moving and go on about my life. That's what I wanted, that's what I created. And I actually released it to you all for you to have and for you to download down in the description well before I even started using it myself, which probably wasn't the greatest idea because once I did start using it for myself, I realized a few things. My lifestyle is about expensive and that's okay because I make a high salary and on top of that I make extra money so that's not that big of a deal but when you couple that with the fact that I overspend in three categories all of which are revolving around food that's groceries, restaurants, and DoorDash now you'll start to see where I am actually overspending. And I was able to make this very quick assessment by just quickly getting onto my smart money calculator, typing all the numbers in for everything that I spend money on every single month. And I put the consistent items to the left, as you see on the screen, and the non-consistent items on the right, which still, they fluctuate in price, but maybe I don't spend money on them every month or not as much money every month. So I averaged all those numbers out and I compared it to my salary. And then I broke it down, which this calculator does all of this for you. It breaks it down to show you how much you spend per year on your consistent and inconsistent items. But then it breaks down how much money you have left over per month. And to my surprise, I had been spending all the way to zero, which means by my own definition, for a lot of the year, not the entire year, but for a lot of the year, I had been maxing out my salary. And all I need to do is cut three expenses. So I said in one of my previous videos that I'm looking at myself and my household as a business. That's what you've got to do because you kind of are your own little business. So when I ran my numbers through this calculator, which this can help you actually plan for all of your 2025, I highly recommend you download it down the link in the description. But it was like a punch to the gut or better yet, a punch to the liver. That's what it felt like. It felt like I was dead in my tracks for a few minutes. Like, wait a minute, I've gone all this time thinking I'm doing all the right things. It was honestly a shot to my ego because I felt like I was doing something right and then the reality of everything showed me that I wasn't. But even though I wasn't properly managing my money for wealth, what I was doing was I was managing my money properly for comfort, which happens to be an illusion. And it was all because I was making these three mistakes one, I was managing my money based off of a four week month, which means I was literally assuming that every month ended after 28 days. Two, I wasn't zooming out and looking at the big picture of my personal finances to look at it on a yearly level. And third, I wasn't breaking the money down to see exactly how much money I'd be left over with at the end of every single month after all of those bills. That just led to me blindly swiping my debit card and just keeping it moving like everything's all good. This led to me saving a certain amount of money right at the beginning of the month. Just like I yell to y'all every single video, make sure you save 
way before the end of the month. Like save immediately and then spend what you have left. So I've been taking my own advice in doing that. However, this mismanagement of money actually led to me saving a certain amount and then once money started getting tight, I start pulling out of my savings account and putting that into my checking account or moving money around from account to account because I thought that I was underestimating the amount of money that I needed to have in my account for that month. In reality, I was over spending. So honestly, this was really like a shock when I looked at my numbers in the mirror and I was like, Man, I'm messing up. And I'm gonna go over this stuff in depth with you on my wealth journey video, so stay tuned for that. But for right now, just know this. It was a slap to the face, a punch to the stomach, whatever you wanna call it. It was something violent done to my ego because I always felt like I was doing what I was supposed to do. I was saving every month, I was investing every month. I was being intentional about building wealth and I was intentional about helping other people learn about how to build their wealth. I mean, from uh, investing aggressively into my Roth IRA and doing all the saving and all this other investing every single month, I didn't realize a lot of my decisions came at a cost. A hidden cost I wouldn't recognize until I actually sat down and looked at the numbers for myself. And that just did something that didn't rest well with my spirit. Because as a financial educator, as an author, as someone who advocates for you and does everything they can to make sure that you have as much financial knowledge as possible to go out there and execute and be successful, I was messing up. I got slapped by reality because I needed to step my game up if I wanted to reach my financial goals. So here's what I learned. If you wanna make this as easy as possible for yourself to manage your money and absolutely thrive with your personal finances, you need to look at one page and look at your entire finances for the whole year and understand exactly how much buying power you will have for that entire year on a month to month basis. And just remember that a month, the average month is 4.3 weeks, AKA 30.3 days. Just being off slightly by your calculation can be the difference between spending the exact amount you're supposed to spend for your budget and spending two, three, four, five hundred dollars over your budget. I'm basically an expert at this now, so I know. Second, it needs to stay as simple as possible. You look at the number, you see how much you're able to spend, you go out there and you don't spend any more than that number than you're allowed to spend, and that's literally all you have to do. Much easier said than done, but with something like the smart money calculator that I've created, that's a very easy way to make it happen for yourself. And you'll know you're doing something right when you check this calculator and you see that you're spending less money than you're making and you're basing this entire budget from your take home pay coming from your primary source of income. When I did this, I realized just how screwed I would be if I didn't have multiple sources of income. And that just goes to show that sometimes when you think you're doing everything right, you're really not. And when you do this, you might be disappointed with yourself at first because you might first only see all the missed opportunities that you could have had throughout the entire year to get ahead, to save, and to invest, yet you still decided to spend your money on the illusion of a comfortable lifestyle. And it's an illusion for the simple fact that you cannot have comfort without freedom. And to me, freedom is a life where you don't have to stress or worry about money or rely on any one person or business or anything to give that to you because you got it already. So once you do this, don't get discouraged because once you understand how to use this smart money calculator, the way you get ahead is by then maximizing the amount of money that you save and invest every month. And you'll do so with confidence. And that's one thing I did do correctly as a young adult was invest. And I've gotten great returns across multiple accounts and I built a nice net worth for myself. But in order to build that net worth, the number I needed to focus heavily on wasn't so much my savings. Savings is important and it's important to build a savings, but the number that built my net worth and multiplied my money was my investments. So of course that led me down the rabbit hole of doing even more math and figuring out what my financial freedom number actually is based on the amount of money that I had invested. I'm gonna give you a ballpark number because I don't have my financial freedom card right in front of me, but I'm adding a little bit more to what it would be just in case I don't get the returns that I expect to make, which means I'm being very conservative about these returns. But give or take, I need to have $2 million invested to never have to work again a day in my life. Now, of course, I'm still young and I'm a workaholic, so I don't see myself not working. 
but it's just more so about having the option to not have to work if you really don't want to. For me, it's more so to have that freedom and flexibility to do whatever I want, whenever I want, whether it's flying out to North Carolina, whether it's going to the gym, whenever I want to, whether I just don't want to do anything that day, just chill the whole day, guilt-free, whatever the case is, and whatever your reason is, you can find your number as well. The way you find out is by doing very simple math, but you don't even have to worry about that because I built yet another very simple system for you that does the math completely for you. And I'll show you what it looks like on the screen right here. But the thing about this that messed me up at first was knowing that I needed a certain amount invested and I already had what I considered to be a substantial amount of money invested only to realize I still had years and years and years and years to go before I would meet my goal if I'm basing it off of the current pace that I'm investing in right now and if I'm basing it off of my current returns that I'm getting right now. And I am getting abnormally large returns right now, so it kind of shocked me as well. So when comparing that to my smart money calculator, you could imagine, all I saw was a bunch of missed opportunities where I decided to forget about my future self and only focus on me right now and focus on my comfort right now, aka instant gratification from groceries, restaurants, and DoorDash. I overspent in all three of those categories by a large margin. So clearly food is something I need to really dial in on, not spending a fortune over every single month when that money could be spent on investments and make my net worth grow two, three, four times faster than it's growing if I don't invest in them at all. So the same way I just called myself out out, what I want you to do is when you do the smart money calculator and you put all your numbers in there for how much your bills are, I want you to look at the top three categories that you're spending in and then look at yourself as a business and find a way to cut them. It doesn't have to be your rent. It can be outside of your necessities. What are your three biggest expenses that you can control? And you'd be surprised if you just cut those by half or completely took them out, how much money you would be saving per month that could then go towards the things you say you can't do. Like, I can't save $10,000 this year. I can't buy a house this year. I can't buy my dream car this year. I can't invest this year. Yes, you can. You can do all of those things if you would just apply yourself and look at what you're overspending in right now that you don't even need. And I promise you, you can find some money. You don't need a $1,000 a month raise. You need to find an extra $1,000 a month so you can then put it towards the things that are gonna make your life the most meaningful in the future. So, and something that I really highly recommend is that you look at yourself and your household as a business because you'd be so surprised at how much money you're spending right now on things that don't even align with your life goals that you have for yourself and for your household. And once you subject yourself to this kind of information, you'll realize that deep down you know that that money could have been used to grow and enhance your future. So a big light bulb moment for me for this year and a big mindset shift that I had to have about money this year was that just because you think you're doing well and you feel like you're doing well just because you're doing all the things, you're saving the money, you're investing the money, that does not mean you're doing the best you can with what you have. There's always room for improvement no matter who you are and we all make mistakes on a subconscious level that relates to our finances that we need to really focus in on avoiding. And if you're curious about what those mistakes are, I have the perfect video for you that I think you really like. You can check it out right here.